I'm Mrs Green and I'm going to tell you about our A-level photography course. The course comes under Art, Craft and Design, Lens and Light Based Media and we use the Edexcel exam board. So is A-level photography for you? Well, we're looking for students who are passionate about taking photographs and have a genuine interest in developing understanding of visual culture. A competent use of written English is essential as a quarter of your marks are based on written analysis, which I'll talk more about later. A real commitment to independent research and development, experimentation and ability to work in a creative and intuitive way is what we're looking for. So during the course, not only will you gain confidence in your technical, artistic and organisational skills, but you will acquire and develop a range of transferable skills such as communication, teamwork and problem solving that will prepare you for further and higher educational employment. I think the beauty of this course is that you really learn to develop your own ideas and express yourself. With project management skills, you learn to take, uh, make mistakes and, and take risks, persevering with ideas and finding outcomes with highly satisfying results. So Britain's creative industries are worth 92 billion and employ 2 million people, are growing twice as fast as the rest of the economy. One in 11 jobs are in the creative economy, which is hard to believe. So moving forward and thinking about your future and how you would use photography, um, it's very compatible um, and complements all subjects. And many of our students um, take um, a wide range of subjects um, to complement it, such as from math and sciences to kind of English-based subjects. Um, so some students go on to study um, art foundation courses, such as um, Central St Martins or Kingston. Um, and even if you don't take an art subject, um, you might be that way inclined and therefore we can adapt your portfolio um, to suit that. And something that we support you with throughout the course is um, building a portfolio um, if that's what you intend to do in the future. So um, we've had students study um, editorial photography and um, going straight on to degree courses in journalism. Um, on alternatively, we've had students um, go to Cambridge University to study liberal arts. Um, one student focused on film um, and went to America to UCLA to study, um, just to give you an idea of destinations in the future. So how will you learn? Uh, the emphasis of the course, on the course is developing your own ideas and creativity, um, with constant reference to historical and contemporary practice and culture, something I hope you will so the course I hope you really enjoy. Um, not only will you be taking your own photographs, you will be taught with structured lessons both in the photography studio and in the Mac suite. Through a combination of workshops, discussions and visits, um, we will introduce you to a wide range of contextual sources, um, allowing you to make personal informed responses and to work um, um, and to the work sorry, of current photographers, artists, designers and craftspeople. So you will study different styles and genres of photography, both historical and contemporary, using a variety of media and photographic techniques. The lessons will be underpinned by tutorial, support, set projects, workshops and individual and group discussion. You will be given ongoing and constant feedback that will allow you to refine and develop your working practices. Um, there's an important written component to the coursework, which is an essay which supports your practical work and involves uh, analysing photography and artwork of your choice. Um, and you'll be required to work independently, making use of private studies. So, um, in your work periods, for example, we might be expecting you to book the studio and complete shoots. Um, and so it is quite a time consuming course, um, but it's a very advantageous if you're well organised um, and conscientious. So four hours um, a week will be dedicated to lesson time. Um, and then, like in other subjects as well, you also be expected to complete four hours of homework on top of that. Assessment and exams. Um, as I mentioned, we use the Edexcel exam board, um, and the criteria is very similar to GCSE Art. So there's four areas um, which assessment objectives carrying 25 marks each, percent sorry, of marks each. Uh, AO1 idea development is um, informed by photographers or artists, so that's your kind of critical awareness and analysis. Um, AO2 experimentation and manipulation of images that can be working in the darkroom, it can be um, working on Photoshop, it can be working manually, um, and that's my favourite assessment objective, that's very creative and fun. Um, AO3 recording is your camera control, um, it's a bit difficult to explain, but um, it's your technical ability and um, like composition and things like that. Um, and AO4 is your personal response, um, which is 
what you produce um, and that can be all manner of things we've got things like um, well just a series of images um, or a book um, sculptures um, it could be um, an installation um, just to give you an idea of a wide range of things our students produce uh, so 60 percent is coursework that includes the essay um, and forms the development of your theme um, and then 40 percent is external exam um, and so i'll just explain how that works so in year 12 um, you start by completing a series of workshops that develop your skills for example using depth of field or studio lighting or photoshop um, this will then run alongside lessons on critical analysis um, and cover a wide range of genres such as portraiture, still life, landscape, advertising, so all of those you'd be producing photographs for. Um, and then you can choose your own theme to work around. So that can incorporate um, all of the genres um, or focus um, on one, for example, fashion photography. And the 60% coursework takes you up to the end of the autumn term in year 13. And then the 40% exam is the theme set by the exam board. And so the structure you will work with and follow will be the same as the coursework. The only difference is that you will produce work and exam conditions in 15 hours, usually over three days. So um, with that exam work, all of your photographs um, um, or film footage can be taken beforehand. And um, that's a real advantage. Um, and so you're examined on your ability to kind of select experiment and refine your work to produce outcomes. A lot of preparation can be done beforehand um, so you can be more rest assured of your results. Um, and as you can see, you know, being a coursework heavy um, subject it is about working consistently, um, but it is a real advantage, um, as I said, if you're conscientious and you've got good communication skills. So I'm just going to talk you through some examples of assessment objectives. And so for AO1, um, We've got investigations you're completing, such as research in a number of ways, looking at journal articles, conducting interviews, responding to exhibitions, and this is just an example of a historical timeline. Um, some brainstorming and um, some photographer analysis. And what I love about reading an image um, is that it's down to the individual. And so um, you'll learn to express your opinions, um, and all of your opinions are valid. And what you see in the image um, is your personal outlook. Um, and with experimentation, um, you then can enhance that um, and really create your own personal message for your work. So just some additional research there. Um, for example, this is um, based on kind of the context or kind of statistics that might inform your, your development of your ideas and things like that. So experimentation, um, this is a collage. Um, we've got some dark ring work, so um, this was actually um, some plant life uh, placed over an image um, to create a photogram, which really enhances the texture of that piece. And here we've got a more kind of artistic take um, and some uh, painting and drawing. And if you are more artistically inclined, then um, you can do a lot of this. Um, and if you're more technically inclined, um, you might be doing more Photoshop, but it, the course really ca um, caters to the individual um, and it, we can adapt and, and focus your skills and where your strengths are. So um, this is some spray painting. And so with recording, it's your ability to control the camera, whether it's studio lighting, it might be your eye composition. As you can see, there's examples of some contact sheets here which show you the kind of range of different techniques um, that a photographer has, a student has um, tried out, just to give you an idea of that assessment objective. And now I'm going to show you some examples of the AO4, the personal response, so the um, final outcome. And as I mentioned before, this can be a, a wide range of different things um, in terms of what form they take. Um, I haven't been able to include portraiture here, um, but hopefully you'll get a feel for um, all of the different um, genres we uh, kind of cover and how expressive the work is. I'm also going to um, just play a little extract from one of our students um, who's going to just give you her outtake on Hi there, I'm Eva and I'm an A-level photography student in year 12 that's here to tell you why I enjoy the subject and why you might enjoy it too. 
Along with photography, I take geography and psychology A-levels. One of the best things about photography is that it goes well with any other subject because you can explore ideas and topics from other subjects that interest you through the medium of photography. Also, photography A-level allows you to develop different skills to other subjects, such as independent thinking, practical, creative and analytical skills through processes of reflecting and evaluating yours and other photographers' work, experimenting and refining on photographs you've taken and problem solving to better your photos, as well as practical skills in how cameras, lighting and darkroom techniques work. Photography also has no written exam, unlike other subjects, so while work is consistent throughout the year, there's no big stress for an exam at the end of year 13, which is always a bonus. Waldegrave also has a great collection of resources for photography students. We've got a studio, darkroom, software such as Photoshop, film and digital cameras, and much more. Don't worry if you're not a photography expert, you'll learn all the skills and techniques you need to know on the course, and you don't need any prior experience with a camera, just a passion for the subject. Photography A-Level allows you to express your creativity and also allows you to explore and capture subjects or issues that are important to you. This could be anything from environmental issues to architecture, fashion and portraiture and so much more than that. This is, for me, the best thing about the course because it allows you to put your own spin on your A-Level that's not possible in other subjects. I hope I've been able to convince you that photography might be a subject worth considering at A-Level, but good luck for next year whatever subjects you choose. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed the range of work there's just a kind of small selection of the fantastic work our students produce i'm always really proud when we put up our end of year exhibition um, and we're always complimented um, with the diverse, about the diverse range of work our um, students um, produce uh, by the exam board so um, the standard is fantastic advantages of studying at Wardgrave are that you have a photography studio dedicated just to a-level students um, and you also have access to our art studio. And we have a professional um, setup with our lighting um, and studio equipment. Um, and there is a dedicated photography technician as well who can also support you, for example, if you're working in, in your um, work periods. Uh, our class sizes are small in comparison to a lot of colleges, so you'll receive um, your more guidance and, and access to resources. Um, and then there's me, I have over 10 years experience um, and will give you um, an excellent one-to-one uh, -one support so thank you for watching um, if you have any questions um, please contact the sixth form at Aldergrave who will pass any queries on to me um, and if you are choosing to study then there are a couple of induction tasks that um, we would like you to complete so I'll just quickly run you through those um, and the best thing you can be doing to prepare is taking photographs even if it's just on your phone um, but also you can start to build up um, a collection of photographer's work that you like you can do this on things like Pinterest um, and this is just personally for you we won't, won't ask to see it but it is a real advantage to think about um, what you're connecting with and why um, task one is take four photographs of objects places or people that represent your identity present them on an A3 page and write about um, how the images represent your identity because identity is the first topic that we'll be looking at um, when you start year 12 um, task two is take three photographs, one that represents your past, one that represents your present, and one that represents your future, um, and present them also on a page and write about them. Um, visit an online exhibition um, or research a photographer that inspires you and produce a kind of response to that. So um, some written analysis um, about just one piece of work um, will be fine. Um, any questions, um, as again, please feel free to email um, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye.